Welcome everybody to Panther Stadium. It's soccer here, girls soccer. The Centennial Cougars coming on 8-1 and 2 against the Spring Lake Park St. Anthony Panthers 1-5 and 1 and uh, my good man Matt Johnson, Matt it's here. We're, we just got done with the game. We did. We had some football last night on a Friday night, and now it's time for some soccer on a Saturday. We are live here on North Metro TV, and it's a windy day, about 50 degrees. Yep. The sun shining. It's a beautiful fall Saturday for soccer. And, Jeff, a story of two very different teams here. The Cougars, right. under the senior leadership of Jenna Roaring, are a very strong team with just one loss on the season. And on the other side of the ball, the Spring Lake Parks and Anthony with just one victory on the season. So two very different teams that we're looking at. No doubt about it. And, you know, I, I'll tell you what, we'll have a look at the uh, Cougars. Uh, Glinsick, Roaring, Barrage, uh, how do you Barrage. Barrage. Oh, excuse me. Gifford, uh, Patina, Rome, Axt, Weber, Osmac, Kenville, and Wurz. Morgan Wurz will be the uh, goalkeeper. She's the, a sophomore. Yeah. Wurz is. It's her first season as a yeah. starting a goalkeeper. Here's Lucky Orr, Spring Lake Parks, and Anthony Panthers. Alila Benside Johnson at the forward. Natalie Polishin. Kirsten Whitney, one of the best athletes on that team. Regan Struck, Taylor Turnquist. Maddie Walraff, Brittany Steppen, Hannah Schultz, Jenna Murphy, and Brittany Allen defending. And then Danielle Jericho, the goalkeeper for your, your Spring Lake Park Panthers. And we are underway. The Panthers have got the ball. They'll be in white, moving right to left on your screen at home. And the Cougars in their red and the black shorts, moving left to right. And as we mentioned, Katri Gifford has the ball. It's going to go out of bounds in the corner. You know, uh, Spring Lake Park, uh, they were uh, against uh, Tatino Grace, and it was a tie, you know. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's both quite a bit for uh, the Panthers. They've only won one game. But, uh, you know, this maybe stir things down a little bit. Now. Well, Coach Hollister Struck said that that Tatino Grace game uh, that they played with the Panthers really was a turning point in the season for them. He said that it really helped them realize they could play together as a team, and they hope that that will translate into victory this morning. Panthers defending now. Spring Lake Park on yeah. offense. Look out yeah. for uh, Lila yeah. Bensad Johnson. And as well, we talked earlier just a moment ago about Kirsten Whitney. Uh, Coach Strzok says that Whitney is probably the best athlete on his team. She's very smart uh, and she's very skilled. Uh, has got a lot of speed too. So while we know that Jenna Roaring for Centennial is one of the better players in the state and has a lot of speed, the Panthers are hoping they can keep up tonight as well. Jenna Roaring is a machine. No doubt about it. She scores a lot of goals. She'll be going to Santa Clara College in California at the end of this season. 38 minutes now to go. Just a couple minutes in. On the far side, the Cougars will have a throw in coming. The boys will be up next here. On North Metro TV. Panthers against the Cougars. Shelby Axe on the near side finds Pharrell Rome, one of the younger players on this team. And now the Panthers will take it back. About midfield. Centennial looks to try to control now very back and forth early on as these two sort of get to know each other. Here's Rome again, the sophomore midfielder. Getting a lot of early touches, and here she goes again. Tries to get a pass up front to Jenna Roaring. Roaring's got some speed. She attacks, and the shot is a little bit wide, but her teammate gets it on an assist for the goal. Just like that, the Cougars score. Nan Glinsick, the freshman, putting it through the net. Boy, it's a quick goal right there. It doesn't take long right there, but a good feed by Roaring and a goal. And uh, that's the way it's done. That's a, they, that, they don't get it any better like that. Look at that. Right there. Right when you think Roaring's going to try to take it herself, she yeah. finds a teammate for the first goal of the day. For the Cougars in the third minute, nine. Look at this excellent Glinsick. pass, and then Glinsick gets it off the left foot, making it look easy. It was just too tough for Jericho, the Panther keeper. It's going to fly out of bounds here on the near side. So one of the things that uh, Coach Flohog mentioned 
is that Roaring is a leader out there on the field, and not only does she take a lot of shots herself, but she's very unselfish. She directs traffic out there on the field, and on that play, you could kind of tell that she was urging Glinsek to come help her out, and that's what resulted in the goal. She tends to really send her teammates in the right direction for her to get them an open pass sometimes, too. No doubt about it. So Roaring will get the assist. What happens, too, is you see the both of them in their screen there in the red jerseys. Panthers will throw it in about midfield. That first goal always gives you a little bit of momentum. Oh, yeah. But, you know, the thing of it is, is Centennial, you know, they, they, they taste it. They want to get to state. And, uh, you know, that's, 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 that's it, you know. For Centennial, it's like, you know, th this is it. We want to get to the state and uh, not going <laughs> to hold nothing back. We were with Centennial last season as they made it to the state tournament at the yeah, Metrodome. Yeah. Now this year they want to win it. I think they you took know. third last year, right? Or, yes, yeah. and they only lost a couple of key players. Daniel Gieske, Katie, and Christy Lilja are a couple of the key Cougars that had graduated. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they've only lost a few players. They've still got a very strong team this year, as is evidenced by just one loss at this point in the season. Panthers down in their own end of the field. A little bit of defense there from Pharrell Rome. The Panthers are a relatively young team. They've got two eighth graders and two ninth graders on their starting roster. The Panthers do. We're about five minutes in now. The Panthers will have a throw in on the far side of the field. Still looking to move the ball down into the uh, attacking third of the Cougars. Midfield, Centennial trying to defend now. Here come the Panthers, pass up the middle. Knocked away by Madison Bettina, one of the junior captains on the Cougars team. Throw in again for the Panthers on the far side. Jeff, the Panthers really trying to sort of piece together some offense here early. It's always hard when you're back on your heels early on. Right. Just two minutes in, they get scored on. Especially when it's early, you know, like you said. You get a, a quick goal, and boy, that, that kind of... Takes a little bit of uh, uh, yes. air out of it, doesn't it? Yep, yep. Hey, congratulations to uh, Coach Diggins. The uh, Cougars beat Anoka last night 41-7. to Way to go. It was a big victory. Yeah, indeed. it was a good game, too. It was... It was hot. I had a good time. A couple flea flickers in that. Well, oh, one off flea awesome. flicker in that game. A couple trick plays. That was awesome. Made it a little more interesting, didn't it? That's, that's awesome. You can check out all of our high school sports action this fall season on our website at northmetrotv.com. Yep. As well as the game you're watching right now live on North Metro. Here come the Cougars again. They're attacking. The shot and the goal into the corner of the net. And guess it who? is number 17, guess who? Jenna Roaring, her first of the day. Ah. Boy, that's a sweet, sweet goal right there. Just taking it all by herself right there. And you know what? The goalkeeper are like, well, am I going to are you going to kick it or are you going to face it? I don't know. Right there. Unassisted. And look at this. Roaring has got that speed. Then she slows up to get the good, clean shot. And that is what she does so well. That's a picture you're going to get used to if you are a Centennial supporter this season. Jenna Roaring continues to be Jenna Roaring. And as we know, Jeff, last season in the playoffs, uh, she got injured, hurt her ankle. Yeah. And uh, she always plays on a uh, coach uh, Flo Hawk said that while she has certainly gotten better over the course of the right. last several months right. it's still a little bit loose but you can never tell yeah. that she's had a history of that injury because she still looks pretty good out there those well, things kind of always bug you when it they happen looks pretty good now two to nothing to score in just eight minutes seven about seven minutes the Cougars yeah. have scored two quick goals 
few of their fans just arriving to their surprise. They already have a 2-0 lead going. The Panthers do have a lot of speed, though, on their end as well. If they can just get some open passing lanes, they could have an opportunity as well. The Cougars again threatening. They get across to midfield. Here comes Centennial again. Bree Bordad, one of the sophomores. Again, the Cougars get it down deep into the Panthers' end of the field. Picked up, no problem, by Jericho. The goalkeeper for Spring Lake Park, Rochelle Prezel, is hurt. She may be starting, but is hurt. So Daniel Jericho is now playing. Who's only a ninth grader? Oh, okay, Prezel. Okay, Prezel. Maybe Madeline is the goalkeeper right now. I, I apologize. It. Yeah, I think it's Iscarica. Mm -hmm. They may have changed up their starting goalkeeper on us. So, correction. Apologize. So Jericho is the goalkeeper, the senior starter. She's wearing number zero in the net. We're about 10 minutes in. Panthers still looking to get some offense going. A pretty good ball movement here by Ben Sad Johnson. Kirsten Whitney in on it as well. And then the Cougars looking to try to, to clear it. Again, Ben Sad Johnson. High pass up front, but into the hands of Morgan Wurz. Well, finally with a get the, the ball. Uh-oh. They finally got it down on that end of the field. But now here comes the Cougars once more. And the speed of Jenna Roaring is just, if you're watching this game at home, just look at number 17 in red. You're looking at one of the best players in the country. No doubt. And every time the ball comes in her vicinity, it kind of makes you wake up a little bit. <laughs> couple of substitutions coming out of the game for the Panthers is number eight, Taylor Turnquist. Hannah Schultz now, the goal kick, trying to clear it out for the Panthers, but the Cougars are right back there. And Pharrell Rome into the corner, long shot, diving effort, and the rebound is a goal. <laughs> Off the rebound, Nan Glintzik gets her second of the day. Off of the rebound, just outside of the hands of Jericho. Could not make the stop, and it's 3 nothing. Well, just like that, it's 3 to nothing in the first half. Three goals in eight minutes for the Cougars. Here's a look at this one. Nice save right there. Excellent save, but now what you want to do is you pick up the, green and the garbage and Put it in, and it's three to nothing Centennial. So a difficult spot if you are the Panthers. It is still very early in this game, but three quick goals by the Cougars making a statement here on the road tonight. And here they go. Jenna Roaring speeding to the ball, going against the goalkeeper. She's got a wide oh, open net. Boy. And that's going to be another goal. Just like that, Roaring's got two, and Glinsick has got two. It's four nil Cougars. Wow. Within 30 seconds, Jeff Dinsmore, they've oh. scored two goals. You cannot give her this open space. No, no, no doubt about it. Jericho came up a little bit too far there, left the wide open net. Trying to defend, Brittany Steppen was there, as you saw there in the left part of your screen, but not fast enough for Jenna Roaring and the Cougars roaring early with a 4-0 lead. Oof. It is, you can you can hear pin drops in this uh, yes. stadium. Yes. Already. Really, Jeff, the Panthers have had one or two 
pretty good possessions where they've moved the ball down into the Cougars end of the field, but they're unable to piece together a few passes. And what makes Jenna Roaring and the Cougars so dangerous is that they get those wide open passing lanes, and here they come again. Roaring in on the play, but a whistle. And she needs a breather, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Three points on two goals and an assist in the first 12 minutes of the game. Wow. To folks at Santa Clara College in California, I don't know if they know what they're in for. <laughs> <laughs> they will be happy to have Roaring next season. The Cougars will certainly miss her. But the Cougars, again, as you mentioned, Jeff, hoping to get back to state again this year. But they've got some work to do. They'd like to win it. Here comes Roaring again, huh? And Ooh. great defense by the Panthers. That's not easy to do. The Cougars will retain possession, though. Pharrell Rome gets a pass up front, top of the box. Gifford for the Cougars going for it. Now the shot and another Cougar goal. It is a hat trick for Nan Glintzik in the first half. Wow, Jeff, it's 5-0 just like that. And two minutes removed from the last goal. Aye. Glintzik puts another one through. Let's see how she did it. That's her second. Off the, off Gifford, the, the, then the defender gets it. And then a long shot up into the corner and there's no way that Jericho is going to get to that one. Nope. Glintzik with three goals in the first half of this one. It is 5-0 with 27 minutes to go in the half. Gifford gets the assist to that. Gifford, excellent job. The Panthers did a good job defending it, but then it's that rebound that for the second time has hurt them. Now the Panthers moving the ball right to left and defended again by Centennial. The Cougars will have a throw in here on the near side. The Panthers, rather, doing the duties will be number yeah. four, Brittany Steppen. They're trying for some uh, substitutions also. There they go. Throwing it in now for the Panthers. Regan struck. Out of bounds again. A very windy day out there. In fact, in talking to Coach Hollister Struck for Spring Lake Park St. Anthony, he said that he was hoping the wind would not be a factor tonight. That ball can get up high in the wind and yeah. affect the trajectory a bit. But for the most part, they've just tried to keep those line drive passes. And here come the Cougars on the near side. And when they start moving, they move. Here comes uh -oh. Jenna Roaring in wide open space from 20 yards out from the goal. Roaring with plenty of room. And it's an excellent save. Oh, hey, nice save. By Daniel Jericho. Anytime Jenna Roaring is coming after you, if you can stop her, you've done something big. Excellent stop by Jericho, and Roaring wants it back, and it's defended nicely. Out of bounds here on the near side. Defensive effort by Hannah Schultz. Look at this one right here. There it is. Tried to fake. Oh, nice. Oh, nice save right there. Jericho kind of batted it to the ground off the top of her palms and got the excellent save. The Cougars unable to do anything on the rebound. Roaring came back right after that and had another opportunity here on the near side, but Hannah Schultz stepped up, one of the eighth graders on this Panther team. That's a way to get you, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, a great way to learn how to play defense is uh, start against Jenna Roaring. So... The Panthers will kick it. Now off the header. Near midfield, the Cougars will clear it out over the net. And so we'll have a goal kick coming for Spring Lake Park. And St. Anthony, 24 minutes to go, Jeff. And early on, it's been all Cougars. It's been all Cougars. See our, uh, to the left now, we say this is where our uh, clock is to the left side. Now. I know. <laughs> We're so used to looking <laughs> to the right side. But there's a brand new uh, new uh, scoreboard that's uh, working real close, actually. It's right up. 
Oh, you'll, you'll see it. They're putting up a new one, huh? Yep, brand new. The Panther Stadium, one of the fine facilities in the North Metro to oh, watch right. football or soccer. It is the best, really. Right up on the right side there, you'll see it is where the... Yeah, they're building it. <clears throat> yep. I don't sure know whether it'll be done or not, but... Uh, Look at Coach Flo Hogg for the Cougars. And an assistant varsity coach, Rob Magno. Mango, rather. Apologize. The Cougars are going to sub in four players. 7, 13, 4, and 11. That is Gretchen Chat, Chelsea Weber, Ali Kish, and Kayla Wingestad. So clearing their starters out of the game now, as you see Jenna Roaring will take a much-deserved seat on the bench. She certainly could use a breather after scoring two goals early on. Her teammate Glinsick also comes out after scoring three. Corner kick, Cougars. And nothing doing there. Jeff, that looked kind of dangerous. It looked like yeah. they might have been able to have a pretty good opportunity there. That looked was close. Wingenstead, who just got in the game, number 11, in on the play. 23 minutes to go now. Goal kick coming here for the Panthers. See if that works. And we're doing Hannah Schultz on the effort. All right, this is a chance for the Panthers to set up their offense now. They've got some space here. Piece together a few passes. Here's Schultz. Free kick coming for Hannah Schultz. She gets it across midfield, and the Cougars defend instantly. Panthers had it for a moment, but then Centennial's Jenna Abrahamson, the sophomore midfielder, got there a little bit quicker. There's only been almost, uh, yeah, eight minutes. And it's already five to nothing, Centennial. Far side now throw in for the Panthers. Goes out of bounds again. Good chance here for the Cougars uh, midway, uh, almost midway through the first half to get some of their subs some playing time. Some of those younger players. The Panthers now have got an opportunity, Jeff. They're down here in the attacking third of the Cougars. They just need to Piece together a few good plays. The Cougars defended on the header. And now they go the other way. Nearing midfield, Panthers clear it out, but then Jessica Axe gets a foot on it for the Cougars. Maddie Jansen there in the middle now to Wingestad. Back and forth now at the middle with the Cougars' second team in there. Axed again now. Tripped up a bit. Good defensive effort by Spring Lake Park St. Anthony. Now uh, Kristen Whitney in on the effort. Trying to get the offense going, but now the Cougars go the other way. With some space is Wingestad, but she's going to outrun herself on the end line there, so it's going to be out of bounds. Jeff, good effort there by Wingestad as she tried to to beat the defender, she just kind of outran herself just a bit, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, very good. Wingstead is uh, one of the, oh, that one's cold. <laughs> There's a Panthers. Well, the Panther uh, uh. bench, <laughs> hey, they're having fun regardless right. of this score, right? Yeah. As we mentioned, it's about 50 plus degrees today. Not yeah. too bad. I believe we're expecting yeah. a high of about 57. Oh. The sun is out. I would say it's a partly sunny day here in Spring Lake Park. Kick coming from Brittany Steppen. Yeah, it's a good shot there. She's got to find some, some open passing lanes, something the Cougars have really defended well tonight. And Ali Kish towards the goal. Excellent save, and she gets the rebound. Daniel Jericho tested a bit there, Jeff. Oh, yeah, that was a nice save. Very nice save. 
She made the stop, as you watch on the replay, right here. And another player was charging, and she jumped right back on top of it. Jericho with a big save. Here come the Cougars threatening again Ooh. off the post. Ooh, that was close. Kayla Wingstad again. Windingstad, rather. Yeah, she had a, a good uh, chance for a goal there, but I don't know if that would have went in, but uh, we'll have a look at it right here. Windingstad right there, and no, nope, that would have been on the outside. It actually but still, did hit yeah. the post, so yeah. yeah, good effort, though. Jericho kind of had read that play, and she just let the post take it, I guess, taking a risk there that could have bounced the other way. Yeah. Perhaps it was a little closer than Jericho thought it would be. No. Jessica Axe now working it on the near side. She's going to kick it back out of bounds in the end line. I'm going to kill a fly, Jeff. Watch out. Right, you Jericho. Jericho. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a replay of the, the fly? <laughs> If you at home just heard a big smack on the window up here. <laughs> I've never seen Jeff Dinsmore laugh so much in my life, but I'm glad we can provide he's some entertainment. Using, he's using for bats. <laughs> we got it. You can eat that. I think the baseball team needs some help. The tennis team, perhaps. Oh, my. Well, you hit it. <laughs> right on the head. Oh, God. Who's going to come clean it off now? We need some <laughs> Windex and a paper towel up here. Oh, man. That's what happens when it's 5-0 in oh. the first half, Jeff. Oh. <laughs> After a busy night of football, right? Yes. Panthers at midfield trying to get some offense going, and they're tripped up at midfield. The Cougars... Go the other way quickly and wide open space again. This is Ali Kirsch, or Kish rather. Kish past the defender, stopped by Jericho. Good effort by Daniel Jericho to make the save after. Well, a good defense there, but uh, you know, that, that could have been a foul actually. You see it right there, but a good stop. But she was tripping here, uh, coming into the, uh, we'll see it right here. 17. Oh. Perhaps could have been right there. Called. That, there is. Yeah. There's actually a Panther player down though now, Jeff. Yeah. So they'll take a moment to check her out. But Ali Kish in that last play, she was not giving up. No, no. Excellent effort too on the attack for Centennial. Great defense as you mentioned, but how Ali Kish had a second effort there is pretty impressive. This is Hannah Schultz who's down on the field with an injury and you certainly never like to see this. Hannah Schultz, an eighth grader who's had a couple of excellent defensive plays today. Looks like she's going to get up on her own power and that is a very good sign if you're a Panther fan. Yeah. She's gonna be okay, Jeff. She'll come off momentarily. Anna Carpenter. The athletic trainer? Yes. We see her pretty much every Spring Lake Park game we cover. Yep. yep. Listen to Coach Flohog. Offering some direction for her girls. Of course, led this Cougar team to state last year. We were with them for that ride. That ended at the Metrodome. Yep. Woo! Cougars now will kick it away, and it's been a pretty slow day for Morgan Worth. The sophomore goalkeeper in her first season as a starter for the Cougars. According to Coach Flohog, she's a very high-level player who continues to develop every game. She learns new situations, new game time decisions she has to make each game. So Morgan Worse has continued to improve as the sophomore goalkeeper, but really hasn't had a lot 
of pressure put on her yet today. Nope, not in this one. You know, Centennial lost to Andover. It was the only uh, time they've lost. And uh, that was a close game also. So, uh, you know, Centennial, they, they're, they're primed to get things going and get to the uh, state tournament. And uh, they, they don't want to, uh, they want to get it all. That's it. Coach Flo Hogg has got some high goals for this team. She said that they learned from that loss to Andover. They've got to play hard throughout the game. She says they tend to score early, as we've seen them do today, but they seem to let that get to their heads sometimes, yeah. and they don't play consistently throughout two full halves. So the key for the Cougars, as you see Jenna Roaring come back into the game, the key for the Cougars is going to be whether they can continue to keep this up and finish strong. Ali Kish comes off the field with a smile on her face. Jenna Roaring. <laughs> if you just look for the fastest player out there, that's who you'll find. Here come the Cougars, though, with three goals already tonight. Jan Nan Glinsick was looking for another, but some great defense on the part of the Panthers. Look at this one. There's a nice play right here, but there's defense. Good job. It's exactly Ouch. what you want to do. Jenna Murphy coming up big for Spring Lake Park St. Anthony on the corner kick for the Cougars. In front of the net, the shot Ooh. high of the Ooh. net. Ooh. 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 That was close, Jeff Dinsmore. That was real close. That was uh, Madison Butina, is that right? Yes, yeah. off the corner kick yeah. from Glinsick. Look at this one more time. Butina oh. just a little bit high. Nice defensive effort by the Panthers. The previous play, trying to keep the Cougars at bay a bit. Roaring with the ball, passes it back to her teammate to try to set up the offense. Oh. The shot from 20 yards away goes in. That is unbelievable. Bree Nelson, the junior midfielder, makes it 6 nil Cougars. Ooh, look ooh, at how far ooh. out she was right here. That was a nice, look at that, right? Oh, oh boy. And I've got to say something here. Bree Nelson, okay? We saw earlier, you could hear earlier, mm -hmm. Coach Flohog talking to her girls. And what she said was, try to get it over her. Yeah. So what they're trying to do is exactly what they did on that play. Yeah. Instead of taking those line drive shots, she said, try to pop it up over her head. That's what they did. And it worked. Yeah. Excellent coaching and excellent execution on the part of the Cougars to do exactly what they were directed to do, and that results in a sixth score of the afternoon. Bree Nelson is a junior. Not a starter on this team, but certainly, as she's already evidenced, a pretty strong player off the bench. Now Hannah Schultz will come in back off of that minor injury. Yeah. Good to see her come back. And really, Jeff, she has played very well tonight for Spring Lake Park St. Anthony. She, as an eighth grader, has come in, made some excellent defensive plays. She seems to be all over the ball for the Panthers. Right. And Sarah Fetter also comes in for the Panthers. Six to nothing, our score. 12.42 left in the first half. Walrath throws it in, finds her teammate, Ben Sad Johnson. She can be dangerous, just a freshman. This one's gonna fly out of bounds on the near side here. Midfield, throw in coming for the Cougars from Claire Kennedy. Back to Schultz, good defense by Schultz, gets it back to midfield, pass to her teammate, Whitney. Whitney's been relatively quiet tonight, although she's one of the better athletes on this squad. They just haven't had a lot of opportunities, the Panthers. 12 minutes and counting, first half. Battle at midfield, here come the Panthers now. Good effort again by Ben Said Johnson. She seems to be around the ball a lot for Spring Lake Park St. Anthony, but she needs some teammates to help her out to get an open pass. 
as well as the Centennial has played offensively, Jeff, their defense has stepped up on virtually every time the yeah. Panthers make their way down the field. Exactly. They've been uh, just on the ball all the time. That one. That one just outside the hands of Ben Said Johnson, or off the feet of Ben Said Johnson. She was looking to get to it, but just tripped up a bit. Now she's got it here on the near side. A battle and great footwork by Ben Said Johnson to get past the Cougar defender. Claire Kennedy was in her face. Ben Said Johnson was able to get the pass around, but now the Cougars take it the other way. That one down into the corner. I don't. I only think that uh, maybe Spinner Parker's only had one shot on goal. Yeah, one shot on goal. I think you're right. It was not a very strong shot on goal, but they did yeah. have. They yeah. did test her one time. Throwing it in is Sarah Fetter again. Yeah, we mentioned that Morgan Worris has not had a lot of work down in her end of the field. Here comes Centennial again. They're threatening, and it's. Glensek <laughs> just a little bit wide. That was close. She's wanted her fourth of the day. Glensek with three goals in this half, and that one just a little bit wide. It wasn't the strongest kick, but she found an open space. And here comes Glensek again. The Panthers are there to defend. They'll clear it out momentarily. But Centennial takes it right back. We'll try to set up the offense. Quick pass if Glinsick can get there. She'll have a shot, but it's going to be a little bit long. Chases it down across the end of the field, and Glinsick looks like she could use a breath too, Jeff. <laughs> Just for the ball ball. Yeah, that's what happens when you score three goals. You yeah. get a little winded out there. A <laughs> couple of substitutions now coming off the field for Spring Lake Park. St. Anthony is Regan, or excuse me, Caitlin Monson. The Panthers with an opportunity here, driving down the field, trying to give chase for Spring Lake Parks and Anthony's Paulician. The Cougars defending though, and now the Spring Lake Parks and Anthony will reset up their offense. On the near side, good defensive move by Kayla Wind Windingstad, again for Centennial. It'll be a throw in though for the Panthers. Here they come, their best opportunity today. Another shot on goal, their second. Yep. It's uh, Kristen w or Kirsten Whitney, Jeff, and no surprise that she's involved in the play. Yeah, th and that was a good, a good uh, chance, good chance for a goal for Spring Lake Park. And like you said, it's the best time that she's had so far, so. Kirsten Whitney involved on offense. The best athlete on the team for the Panthers, according to her head coach. Uh-oh. Hollister struck some wide open space for the Panthers. Here they come, looking to get their first uh, goal outside. tonight. Whitney is outside. slowed up by the whistle, and just when you think they're going to put one through, yep. offside call. Some good hustle by Whitney, just a little too quick. Her teammate <laughs> needed to catch up to Look her. Look at it right here. Just a little bit too far. Yeah, and that results in the whistle. So it goes the other way, and it's been a, a tough afternoon. Here comes Roaring. The shot. Goal, Cougars! Jenna Roaring for the hat trick. She's got three now. And just like that, it's going to be 7 nil Centennial. Look at this one more time, Jeff. You give her space, and she's going to do this to you. Yeah. Roaring with three tonight. She also has an assist. I think they were yelling that uh, they thought that she, that should have been uh, offside for her also because it was uh, quite a bit. It was close. Yeah. Well, they give her the goal. Yep. She's got three, and Glinsick has got three for the Cougars. The other goal coming from Nelson. Yeah. 
It was uh, Nelson scoring at the 29 minute mark. Three Nelson. We've got about just under seven minutes to go now. First half of play. And it is seven to nil Cougars. Jeff, if you are Panther head coach Hollister Struck, what do you tell these girls right now? Don't get hurt. <laughs> no, because it, it, it is a, it's a non-conference uh, non -conference game. And uh, I just try to stay healthy and get through it. Yeah. Roaring has been dominating today. Look at this on this points. season. 21 goals this season. Yeah, you know, just don't hurt. It don't get hurt, and uh, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, that's tough to do. You know, you're you're down seven to nothing. It's like, oh boy, you know, because that, that that's a lot. You know, for for any soccer game, but uh, you know, hey, it, it it things can happen anytime. Roaring has scored those 21 goals in. 12 games, so she averages almost two goals a game. Three tonight will certainly help that. And I also think that it's like you want to get a little pride, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Panthers, I think, knew coming into this game what they were up oh, against. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, they certainly didn't expect to come out here and, and dominate. Uh, I think they hoped that they could stay close, compete with Centennial, but, you know, they're a young team. And Centennial is just, it's not that the Panthers are not playing well, it's just that Centennial is that good. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Panthers have had a couple of opportunities. Some great leadership on the field from Hannah Schultz, among others. Lila Benset Johnson's been in there. A couple of key injuries for Spring Lake Parks and Anthony to mention as well. Michaela Smith is a senior midfielder. She's out with injury, as is Rochelle Prezeller sophomore starting goalkeeper so a couple of injuries for the Panthers to deal with and coach Strzok has had to put together the best team he could in the field opportunity here but picked up by Morgan Worse so Panthers are moving the ball down on the, the Cougars end of the field four and a half to go high bounce across midfield Centennial threatening one more time Nelson has a goal tonight, loses it there. Nice defense by the Panthers, looking for a passing lane. And now just like that, it goes the other way, and here comes Jenna Roaring in the corner. The long shot. Ooh, her teammate Nan Glintzik was waiting for it off the assist. But the Panthers got there, and now a nice save by Jericho again. She's had a couple big ones tonight, Jeff. That's a nice save, nice save. Look at this one more time. Set it up nice. And a big save. And she falls on top of it after knocking it down. That's the big thing. You can knock it down, but if the ball gets away, it's a rebound opportunity oh, for yeah. the other team. Yeah. She not only knocks it down, but falls on top of it as well. Oh. Rolling oh. off the <laughs> header. Just a <laughs> little <laughs> bit wide. <laughs> Jenna Roaring, look at the look on her face. She says that's one that got away. <laughs> Excellent looking shot from Roaring. That's a tough one to get, and she just about got it. Panthers breathing a sigh of relief here. They go back across midfield, and the Cougars quickly defend, and Ashley Osmek, the sophomore defender on the play. Abrahamson now on the far side near the corner. The Panthers will let it go out of bounds. Have a look at this right here. Look at this. Look at that play. Oh. Excellent oh. pass. Once again, that was oh. coach telling them to try to pop it up and get it over the defense to try to get an opportunity. They got one goal that way. They almost had another one there. Yeah. On what would have been a big assist. The Panthers. Just not quite fast enough down there on that end of the field, Jeff. Another good effort by Ben Set Johnson, but the Cougar defense is just a little bit quicker. Yep. Yeah, getting a little bit better to get a, you know, a couple opportunities, but uh, 
they're certainly the Panthers uh, giving the Cougars a little bit more work on defense. Nelson at midfield, knocked away. Panthers trying to get to it. Battling for the ball is Whitney. But a couple of Cougar players are there. We're under two minutes to go now in the half. And it is seven to zero, Centennial. Here come the Panthers. The shot is gonna be picked up by Morgan Wurz. And here they go, trying to pop it over the head of the defense again. Far side, midfield, Panthers take over. Looking for a pass, and they're gonna get a long pass. Jones. Here comes Ben Sad Johnson. Great opportunity if she can beat the defender. Off the left foot, oh. saved! Oh. The rebound opportunity, no good. The Panthers battle, and there's a whistle. Wow, Jeff, excellent, Whoa. excellent opportunity there. As Ben Sad Johnson had a great shot on goal. Oh. Morgan Wurst coming up with a big time save. Right there, nice save, Brent. Oh, nobody there. On the rebound. Oh, good defense. It was Ashley Osmek defending for Centennial. Wow. Just prior to that, you saw Morgan Worse make a great save, and then that was the rebound opportunity in which they almost scored again. Here comes Glinsick, but it's into the hands of Jericho. 20 seconds to go. First half a play from Spring Lake Park. Panthers at their home stadium trailing 7 to 0. 10 seconds to go. The Cougars have got one more chance. And a whistle. Then the clock of the first half. Siren will sound, and Jeff, a first half dominated by the Centennial Cougars. Unreal. That's our halftime score with the Centennial Cougars leading seven to nothing over the Spring Lake Park Panthers. We'll be back here on North Metro TV. Known for its vineyards and hilltop villages, Umbria is also known for its delicious tasting pizza. Made traditionally from the finest ingredients, Umbria Pizzeria will make you taste the difference, smell the love, and transport you to Italy. La cena è pronta. Dinner's ready. You might even begin to feel like an Italian. Delicioso. <laughs> Umbria Pizzeria, turning taste into memories. If you need seamless gutters, whether the job is large or small, you can say, I know a guy. For your full service landscaping, you can say, I know a guy. If you need commercial or residential lawn care, you can say, I know a guy. I'm Charlie Walker, and if you need professional seamless gutters, landscaping, and lawn care, you can say, I know a guy. In the nation, our agents are always there, helping make sure that when your life changes, your nationwide insurance coverage changes too. We put members first because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation where protection is personal. Nationwide is on your side. In Anoka County, contact Twin Cities Insurance Group, your nationwide insurance agent. Our score, seven to nothing right now. Our Centennial Cougars over our Spring Lake Park Panthers. On North Metro TV, I'm Jeff Dinsmore along with Matt Johnson. And you know what, it, it's, it's <laughs> quite the game for the Centennial Cougars. It's been all Cougars. It is, and it's been a Jenna Roaring dominating. She started off with a great assist here. Nan Glinsig, her first of three goals. That one just came three minutes into the game, and then three minutes later, the Cougars came back, made it 2 nothing with Roaring's first goal of the game, and then her teammate Glinsig comes back with her second about four minutes later. Open shot there, making it look easy, and then Jenna Roaring comes roaring back again here. Oh. This made it 4-0. Just 30 seconds later, the Cougars were not done yet. 
It is Nan Glinsick again this time at the 27 minute mark. Finds an open space through a couple defenders over the head of the outstretched goalkeeper Daniel Jericho. And then Bree Nelson coming off the bench, popping one over the head of the defender. Over the goalkeeper, just like coach directed, and then Jenna Roaring came back, completing her first half hat trick with this one, making it seven to nil Cougars. Their last goal coming at the seven minutes to go mark of the first half, and Roaring and Glinsick keeping the Cougars on track for victory. It is early. But it's seven to nil Cougars dominating so far, Jeff. Yeah, it, it's like I said, it's been all centennial. But you know, like you said, you know, you, you knew that you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, you know, be faced with yeah, this. exactly. <laughs> and and uh, but the thing is, now they see they've got a. Uh, uh, it looks like a new goaltender. Hopefully, uh, they're gonna warm up and hopefully they'll get her uh, into the uh, game and see what happens. You know, uh, because it, it it doesn't hurt. You know, and if we get a new goalie in, Spring Park had a couple of good chances there towards that uh, last uh, end of the uh, half. So, they you know, did. it's it's could happen. The Panthers are a pretty yeah. fast team themselves. Yeah. They said they've been playing better since Tatino. Can they come back from a seven goal well, deficit? Yeah, seven. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah. All right. But it's seven we'll to nothing. Out. Yeah, we'll be back with the second half next here on North Metro TV. is magnificent. Here comes the big one, Elizabeth. I love it so much. I'm feeling a little guilty on account of me being married. There are eight wonders in the world. I can't believe it. Pinch me. I think I'm dreaming. Okay. Ah, oh, now it's real. Well, the half is about ready to go as both of the, or all three of the referees are here. And uh, it's seven to nothing right now. And the uh, Panthers are, uh, you know, it's gonna be tough, but you know, like I said, you wanna, you still wanna save face a little bit, get a couple of goals and uh, see what happens here. The Cougars leading seven to zero off of three goals from Jenna Roaring, three from Nan Glinsick, and one from Bree Nelson in the first half. A busy first half, as you can see, Glinsick, one of the stars, with two players of the hat trick today for Centennial, and the Cougars well on their way to their ninth victory of the season. The Panthers, though, as you said, Jeff, hoping to come back here, get a couple of goals to at least gain some pride. They came into this one with one victory in the season, knowing they're playing a stiff test against the Centennial Cougars, a tough test rather. The Panthers still trying to fire themselves up after the halftime chat from Coach Hollister struck. It's a little smile from the team there for the Panthers. And it is official now. Matty Iskerkic is going to come into the game for the Panthers at the goal. All right. The freshman getting some playing time. Ooh. Matty Iskirka will replace Daniel Jericho. So we are set to go for the second half. Eskirka in goal for the Panthers. The Cougars up 7 to nil here on the road today. Glinsick and Roaring, the two stars for Centennial, await the opening kick here of half number two. Six goals between those two today. Trying to stay warm. 50 degrees at kickoff. And Roaring quickly gets to the ball. The Cougars. Do not appear to be letting up, Jeff Dinsmore. They'll continue to no. keep the pressure on. Yeah. Centennial, here they come. On the far side of the field. Some space for Pharrell, Rome. Stopped by his scare kick. Hey, there's a nice sketch there, huh? Good One of those plays you've got to make.
If you are Spring Lake Park, what do you you know? What's your strategy here? This, they've had a hard time stopping Roaring and Glensick. It's trying to close up those passing lanes. Try to get yourselves a couple of opportunities. That's tough. You know that that's tough to do right now because uh, they, they do. You know the, exactly what you you said right there. That's how they that's how they play, and and they're they're tough, and and not just Spring Lake Park. Every team that they've played, with the exception of Andover, but every team is you know that's unbelievable cougars with just one loss on the season as you mentioned and again coach flo hog saying that they learned from that loss that they've got to finish strong they tend to score early and stop well they've scored seven in the first half and that should be a you would imagine a pretty good cushion but if you don't finish strong you're always at risk of losing the game yeah. so we'll see if the cougars can hold on today yeah. Meantime, the Panthers trying to get their offense together. The boys will have a uh, one o'clock game here on North Metro TV. Stay with us. We yes. are live today bringing you this action. The Panthers and Cougars will face off after this, the boys side. At midfield, the Cougars now, the free kick coming. It is deep. Panthers will get a handle on it momentarily, and now it's going to be popped up into the hands of the new keeper. And easy catch for Iskerka, but you've got to make it. Yep. Cougars looking to go the other way. Tied up at midfield. Panthers have it. Wall, uh, Whitney again on the play. Centennial back down deep in their own territory. Gretchen Chat, a sophomore defender, is going to give it chase. A couple of Cougars subs coming in. Wurz, again, we mentioned as the sophomore goalkeeper. As you take a look, she's not been tested a lot today, but her first season as a starter. This is her 12th game as a starter. And her team has lost just one. Back at midfield. And now deep. The Cougars will get there. Roaring by herself. Goal! Squeaks that one past the new keeper, Jeff. That was a close play. Number four. But Roaring will take it. Fourth goal of the day. It is eight to nothing. Yeah, that's that's a nice goal right there. That you know that's going to beat anybody. But uh, there it is right there. Look at this. That is a shot. Oh, unreal. Off the, the toe. Look yeah. how close the Scarecrow is to getting this though. Off the toe. Oh. Just outside of her reach. That's got to be yeah. very frustrating as the goalkeeper. Right, right up the toe. Right there. She had time to react, but couldn't quite get those arms out there enough. And she comes again. Oh! <laughs> Off the post! <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at that. Up the crossbar. Yeah. She should have like six goals right now. Ha! Four is not good enough, huh? Mm. She did have two that came very yep. close. Yep. Wow. What can you say Yikes. about Jenna Roaring? She's a heck of an athlete. Huh? Unreal. Look at this one it more is. time, Jeff. How close did it get? Oh, Ooh. it even came Ooh. on the Ooh, inside. That was a goal. Did it you hit see the that? inside of that the was, post? Yeah, that should have been a goal. Did you see that? The replay reveals a lot. It was very close. Hit the crossbar, went on the inside. Okay, yeah. The, uh, okay, now they just told me that the whole ball has to come in. I, it looked like it to me, but okay. Very close, very close. Woo. Regardless, diving effort here. Maybe a handball, I'm not sure. As a uh, diving effort there by Bree Bordage.
Wow, that was close. That was close. And a heck of a shot from our camera. Oh, to man. Be able to see it. Yeah. In slow motion. Free kick coming now for the Panthers. Big opportunity. The shot is high over the post. And so they had the wall set up and kick was just high. And officially now the Panther bench, as I predicted, drinking hot cocoa <laughs> on the bench. <laughs> well, you might as well enjoy a beautiful chill in the air, huh? Fall. Yeah, today it's fall. Yeah. It is. Here comes Roaring, finds Nan Glinsick. Glinsick working between a couple of defenders, looking for some room. How is she getting this oh. open? Oh. Look at her dribble around the defense. Finally, the oh. Panthers come up with it. Hannah Schultz again, oh, making a big defensive play after Glinsick dribbled <laughs> through traffic effortlessly. Unbelievable. That was sweet. That ball movement was very oh, impressive. But man. Hannah Schultz, again, the eighth grader for the Panthers, comes up with a big play. Yeah, that's a big defense, but man, oh, man. I mean, Glinsick weaves between about four different defenders on that last play. <laughs> Thirty-two, forty-five to go in the game. A look at the star roaring for the Cougars. Far side, it's going to go out of bounds. Well, it's close, and yeah, then now it does slide out. Rome was giving chase there on the far side. Here's. Schultz again, nice defensive play, gives the Panthers possession back. They'll take it across midfield. With some speed, they'll have an opportunity. Paulician looking for some room. Down in the corner. Excellent shot oh, nice. and a good save by Wurz. Nice shot by Paulician. It's a nice chance there. I didn't think she had the, the, the place into it to get the ball in the ball. Look at it right here. She goes up against Gretchen Chat, number and seven on seven. That's tough. That's a really tough. Mm -hmm. How she got oh. that ball back over her, but kind of behind her. Yeah. Horizontally made a great effort. But the bounces have not been going the Panthers way today. At midfield, the Cougars clear it out. Jenna Roaring takes it herself. A couple of defenders are there and they clear it out. The Panthers do, but then right back to Centennial. On the near side, Glinsick looking for a pass. She's got Roaring if she can get it to her. And she's going to lose it to the Panther defense. On the effort for Spring Lake Park, St. Anthony with Layla Bensa Johnson. 31 minutes to go in the game. Centennial down in the Panther end of the field again. This one popped up out of bounds on the, the end of the line. It's been a, despite the leadership of the Cougar goal scorers, it's really been an all around effort, both defensively and yeah. offensively. Yeah. Free kick for the Panthers, a good one out across midfield. But there the Cougars wait in red. Another nice clear by the Panthers. Ben said Johnson trying to make some work of it and she gets a pass. Whitney is there. Whitney finds Paulician, who had an excellent effort on the last drive. Now Walraff on the far side. Panthers will throw it in. Turnquist, throw in. Looking for an extra pass. And right into the hands of Morgan Wurz. At this point, Jeff, you are mentioning the Panthers just need to regain a little bit of pride. Try to piece together something to give yeah. yourselves something to, to write home about. But I'll tell you what, it's not tough. It, it, it's tough. Uh, you know, Centennial is <laughs> they're good. And here they come, Glinsick. 
in the box, but Panthers find her. Don't forget, everybody, on North Metro TV, you can uh, check out Sports Den right here. Right here. Sports Den. 6 o'clock on Wednesday is our uh, first. We'll have the... Uh, uh oh Goal. Oh, boy. Goal. <laughs> no. No. No goal. They waved it off. Yeah. I believe it was, uh, yeah, it was uh, number 16 for Centennial, Katri Gifford on the effort yeah. by the whistle blow right before it. And Gifford yeah. won't be happy about it. Have a look at it right here. I'm not sure. Roaring. Oh, nice. Good footwork. And then. Oh, well. Let's see where. Oh, yeah. Maybe offside? Guess so. Gifford, the sophomore midfielder, was close to scoring there. Another whistle here. Midfield, the Panther player falls to the turf, which is going to be all right. As I said, Sports Den will have all your highlights of the week. Pretty good week of sports in the North oh, Metro, yeah. huh? Spin Park Panther football team will play tonight. There's Sports Den, 2, 6, and 10 a.m. or a.m. or p.m. Premier live Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Kenton Kip. And? Jeff Dinsborn. Who's that? That's uh, some guy that just come across on the no. <laughs> I like your uh, your uh, promotion there. You oh, and Kenton in the, billboard? in the weeds. <laughs> yeah, in the weeds. An oldie but a goodie. That's right. That's still a classic. Uh-oh. There's a nice save. Every time Jeff Dinsmore is on television, it's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. 27 minutes left. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> if only the people at home could hear what uh, we. Ah yes, yeah. The, if they could only hear what we're being told in yeah. our in our ears. Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you a troublemaker, Jeff Dinsmore? Uh, no, no, never. No, you no. were never a troublemaker. Never. Good, good, good. Never. I didn't figure you to be one, but what? just had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Kenton was gonna say something, but he didn't. See. He's, he's, my, he's my boy. He's, uh oh. Cougars threatening once more. Oh, nice block. Yeah, good defense there. It was Katri Gifford again trying to redeem herself for that last one that got waved off, but some Panthers come up on D. Nice play. Other games coming up next Friday night will be homecoming at Centennial. For the football team. Yeah, they'll take on Champlain Park. That'll be a big game. It should be. And, uh, you know, the Cougars coming into the game last night when they defeated Anoka really did not seem too confident, but they played a, a good game all around. That running game is very impressive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you say your Panthers play tonight? Yeah, they play today at 3 o'clock. Ah, that's why you're wearing all that football uh, gear. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, they'll uh, be... Taking on Cooper, which is uh, very good also. So is it a home be, game? No, it'll be at Cooper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's, it's their homecoming. So. Excellent. Well. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> 25 minutes to go in this one at 8 to 0. Could, be, could maybe have the game at the, like the football, like over. At I the think they should play their game here <laughs> after the boys' game. A full day of Panther sports. Oh uh, yeah. So what do you expect out of the Panthers tonight, Jeff? Be a good hmm. Cooper, pretty good team. Oh yeah, yeah, Cooper's. Oh. Well, let's focus on this uh -oh. goal coming up. Oh, oh nice, nice save. save. Well, a good effort there by the new goalkeeper, Eskerka, being tested hey, a little bit. How about that? 
You know, that's the second or third time Katree Gifford's been in on the play offensively, Jeff. Gifford Watch this. really wanting that first goal of the night between two defenders, leaping effort in the save. Hey, that's, that's a nice save right there. That is a nice save. Almost a field goal, Jeff. Yeah, Dinsmore. I was just thinking that. Look at this. Thanks to the tip. Whoa. Over the crossbar. Not quite. 24 minutes to go in this one. Now the Cougar is still threatening. Uh oh. Oh, here she comes. Katri Gifford. She's got an open opportunity up to the left foot. Oh. No good. Rebound. Stopped. And the Panthers, D. Stepping up a bit here the last couple minutes. They don't want the Cougars to score anymore. Ali Kish in on the effort as well as senior forward. Another save by Iskerka. Yeah, she's come into the game and played pretty well for yeah. Spring Lake Park. That's just a freshman, Jeff. I mean, not, not bad at all. No, I, I think uh, Spring Lake Park uh, against Cooper, I think uh, it's going to be a tough game. But uh, I don't know. that. Uh, the defense is, is, is so good. Spring Lake Park defense. The Panthers looking to get their first goal tonight back here in Spring Lake Park, and they just come up a little bit short. And, you know, a frustrating day for Ben Sad Johnson, who's really a leader of this team as a freshman. She's a strong attacker. There's where they knew score crap, score. Uh, is going to be. Yeah. Off the corner kick. Oh. Excellent save by the sophomore Morgan Wirth. The Panthers were going to try for the rebound and they couldn't get there in time. Wirth covers it up. Listen to me. The scorny, scoring thing. Score. You're fine. <laughs> That's what happens when you get young, right, Jeff Dinsmore? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've been with us for 30 years? Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Uh-oh, look who's got the ball. Oh, yeah. Excellent pass from Roaring, but the Panthers will try to defend. Roaring waiting, and the Cougars will Get one more shot at it, but no problem for Iskerka. And at the 22-minute mark, they'll kick it away. Well, you know, the thing of it is, is, is uh, Iskerka has, has, has had good ball, uh, good play. Good well, goal. yeah, she's been playing very good in the goal. And, in fact, only one goal she's given up yeah, in the second exactly. half. exactly. And I think that's that's huge. However, Centennial, like they said, they, they, they score quick. And, and they uh, slow they, down. Yeah. That could be something that could hurt them later on in the season. We're out to as large of a lead as they have now. It shouldn't be in a factor, but it is certainly something on Coach Flohog's radar as they progress throughout the season. Another relatively short kick off the foot of Iskerka. Gets about to the 40-yard line of the football field. Far side now. Roaring will chase it down in the corner. She can't get to it in, in time. Excuse me. Coach Flohog talking to us before the game and saying that they know that their speed is their biggest strength and that Roaring is that leader that's going to hopefully take them back to the dome. There's a penalty. They're calling for the yellow card. They don't think they're going to get it. No, no. Some of the Panther players on the bench are running around the track to warm up a bit. Perhaps they'll get some <laughs> playing time here in a second. Got to get some of that hot cocoa they've got down there on the <laughs> Panther bench. Or one of those tie-dye blankets would be nice, too. Under 20 minutes to go now in a Cougar domination so far. Don't think we expected this one, Jeff. I mean, I, I think the Cougars, a lot of people probably thought coming into this one that they were the better team, but 
you know, the Panthers have got a lot of speed, too, and some talent. They just haven't been able to put one through their net. Well, you know, I I, I, I think that um, Centennial is, you know, everything that you said that, uh-oh. Uh, They're just that good. <laughs> Roaring. Yeah. yeah. Schultz tripped up. Yeah, Couple. I think that they are that good, and, and you know, it's... Kalo Windingstad and Claire Kennedy will come back into the game for Centennial. Replacing Katri Gifford and Ali Kish. And we got a corner kick coming. Roaring gets it out front of the box and the Panthers are there. Roaring with four goals tonight. Three for Nan Glinsick and one for Bree Nelson. 18 minutes left in this one. Cougars with just one goal this half though. Try to keep up the momentum. Ro roaring here, tripped up. Good defense by Spring Lake Park. Gretchen Chat gets to it. She gives chase on the near side, and the Cougars will have a throw in coming, and Chat will do the honors. Chat gets it in quickly to Bordage. Bordage back to Rome. Now the Panthers clear it up towards midfield, but the Cougars are there, and they get it on the header. For the other way now for Spring Lake Park. And St. Anthony, a couple subs will come in for the Panthers now. Standing by on the near sidelines are 21, 14, and 22. That's Maddie Walraff, uh, Charlotte Wolf among them. Couple of the Panthers ready to come in, just gonna get some playing time at this point. Centennial will bring in some of its subs uh, momentarily, it looks like, too. At least a couple warming up on the bench. 16.50 to go. Cougars give chase on the far side out of bounds. Panthers will throw it in. Looking still for their first goal of the game. And here come some subs. Whole lot of Haley subs. Myron comes in, as well as Maddie Walraff. Off the field is Natalie Paulishan. Had a couple good drives tonight. And then Taylor Turnquist will also come to the bench along with uh, Caitlin Munson for the Panthers. Far side throw in for Spring Lake Park. St. Anthony again there in the white jerseys. Moving from left to right on your screen. Morgan Wurz picked it up for Centennial. As we mentioned, stay tuned to North Metro TV a little bit later on for the boys game between these two teams. Between these two schools, rather. Spring Lake Park against Centennial. It's a good, good game. Field. Centennial trying to threaten again. Gretchen Chat. Claire Kennedy will lose it. Centennial will make another substitution. Bree Bordage will come off, and Jenna Abrahamson will come on to the field. Number 36 in red. A little over 15 to go here from Panther Stadium, along with Jeff Dinsmore, I'm Matt Johnson, North Metro TV bringing you all of the action, and here come the Panthers. Jeff, another good opportunity. It seems like every time they get down there near the goal, yeah. they miss a pass, a key pass. Yeah, yeah, that makes a big difference, though. You know, the thing of it is, is you got to get a chance, and, and you know, good defense by Centennial. <laughs> Corner kick coming now. This one will come off the foot of Lila Bensad Johnson. Oh, wow, worse dives for the corner, right? As soon as it comes up in front of the goal. Usually that play gets to another player before it gets right to the keeper, but 
Worth dough for it. Look at this one more time. It's right nice off play. the corner. Oh. Ooh. She steps out in front of the Panther player to make the diving effort. Good stop. An aggressive play there by the young sophomore to pretty much jump over your the opponent to make a diving effort. A risky play, but it paid off for the Cougars. Roaring gives chase, slowing down just a bit late in this one. <laughs> when Roaring slows down, she's still faster <laughs> than anybody else in the field. Look at her in the left part of your screen, number 17. Throw in for the Cougars, and Gretchen Chat's got it. Centennial will make another substitution. Look at this one more time, right in the face. Hey, look at that beautiful shot. In front of the camera, Ooh. and a little bit of contact there yeah! on Windingstad. And a goal. Well, you blink, and this is what happens, Jeff Dinsmore. Yeah. yeah. Madison Bettina, number 18, with her first of the night, and it's a nine to nil game. Let's take a look at how she did it. Off the corner kick, Bettina waits for it out front off the right Ooh. leg and just like that. Bettina, the junior midfielder and a captain on this Cougar team, gets the second goal of the half for Centennial. And Roaring will get us assessed to it. She finds a way to be involved in every, uh, yes. every single play. Yep. Yeah. Twelve and a half minutes left. Nine nil. Our score here at Panther Stadium on North Metro TV. Don't forget, Jeff Dinsmore, you can catch this game or any of our other fine fall broadcasts on our website at NorthMetroTV.com or you can order a DVD. Just give us a call. Check it out one more time. Yeah. You don't want to miss any of the action. It's an action-packed season between Centennial, Spring Lake Park, and Blaine. We've got a lot of talented teams this season, Jeff. Absolutely. In all sports. There it is right there. Order DVD. You can watch, watch our games online. Yeah. Or you can even watch your favorite show. Sports Den. I watch it all the time. Do you? Oh, yeah. You have no choice, do you? No. You're on it. You have no choice. But I watch it, too. Good job. I watch Kenton. He's, he's good. 11 20 to go. Panthers will try to score a goal against a tough Cougar defense. Centennial's really put up a wall tonight, blocking all those passing lanes. Centennial, a couple of new players on the field, including ones not even on the roster. <laughs> Centennial, a pretty deep team, too, Jeff. You look at it, you know, they've only got one, two, three, four, five, six seniors on the entire roster. Yeah, yeah. They're a very young team. We mentioned they lost the Lilja sisters, Katie and Christy, last year. They also lost Daniel Gieske their goalkeeper last year, but Centennial seems to be bringing back talented teams year after year, and that's thanks to the the efforts of uh, Coach Flohog and Rob Magon, the assistant varsity coach. The junior varsity coach is Lori Geyer and B-Squad Jill Doherty. Really at all levels, Centennial bringing up some pretty decent talent. Assisting Panther head coach Hollister Strzok is Lucas Rodriguez, is Sarah Hitchcock. The Panther team also relatively young, two eighth graders and two ninth graders as starters. We've seen some of them have a pretty good impact in this game, including Hannah Schultz, a name we can't mention enough of, number yeah. 18 in white. 
Hawks has played some great defense. Here comes Jenna Roaring again. Watch out, Roaring looking for a fifth the goal tonight. She gets a pass off. Oh, <laughs> mishandled by Oops. Maddie Jansen. <laughs> And Roaring, more frustrated with that one than Jansen. <laughs> Look at Roaring's excellent pass. She wanted the assist right here. You can't do it much oh better than this. Oh, boy. Maddie Jansen, swing and a miss. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Tried to go off the left foot and yikes. <laughs> well, you don't want to go double digits on him anyway, do you? <laughs> Jansen coming into the game and a senior midfielder set up perfectly by her teammate wow. Roaring, but she wow. couldn't capitalize. Wow. <laughs> One of the very few things that didn't go exactly how they wanted it to <laughs> today. We are at the about eight minute mark now. Centennial make a substitution. Winding said back in the game, number 11. She's been pretty solid off the bench today. Yep. Number 11. She replaces Maddie Jansen. Far side of the field, it's gonna fly out of bounds. The Panthers will throw it in. Spring Lake Park, St. Anthony still looking for their first goal today. They seem to have played better in this second half, being outscored 2-0 in this half. Yeah. The new goalkeeper came in, and Iskerka has done a pretty good job for Spring Lake Park and St. Anthony. Chat has it at midfield, gets it to Nelson. Nelson to Roaring. Jenna Roaring, good footwork through a couple of defenders, gets the pass up top and it's gonna be a little bit wide. Number, nice stop. Number eight for Centennial was waiting the opportunity. Sun coming back out between the clouds on a beautiful fall day. Yeah. Temperature is 52 degrees. Going for a high of 56 today. Mm -hmm. If only we had a weather report from Devry Foss. <laughs> the wind is wind is about 14 miles an hour. Bit of a factor, could be a factor in the game. Devry, a meteorologist, now? Or? He claims to be wow. the kids in high school. The kids only in high school. All right, so All here, th right. this just in. This is just just in. Oh, sorry, we're still watching soccer. Yeah, oh. it's a goal. <laughs> the Cougars score like a broken record. And it's ten to nothing. And let's see, uh, Roaring, of course, happens to be in the picture, doesn't she? Excellent yes. assist here to her teammate who does not have a name on the roster, so we apologize. We don't have a number eight, a name for the scorer. So number eight scoring for Centennial, excellent job. Now you said? Off the assist from Roaring. Okay, so this just in. Mm -hmm. This is breaking news on North Metro Television. That's what we do here. Okay. Um, after this game, we're going to have a little bit of time to kill because yeah. we have a boys game after this. Yeah. Uh -huh. I understand you might be departing after this game, yes, Jeff, I because will you be. have somewhere to be, like yes. Cooper or something. Yeah, but, yeah, but I know But, I'll see but it. you might want to stick around for, for between the games because Devry Foss. Mm hmm. One of our crew members, meteorologist, is, yeah, slash meteorologist, yeah. slash foodie, uh -huh. is going to be eating something. I'm not going to tell you what. Cause you got to stick around. But it's going to be a challenge, a food is challenge. He, he's going to eat. He's going to eat something hot. Let's just put it that way. 
Okay. And is he, he's not going to eat this fly that he's just hit on the, <laughs> the window. He's going to eat the fly, right? I'm going to fry it up and sell it at the state fair. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, no, he's not going to eat the fly that I hit. He's going to eat something else crazy. Oh, okay. It's not quite going to be Andrew Zimmern-esque, but uh, he's going to eat some oh, garden fresh vegetables uh, between games. And it's good. And we're going to talk to the co- it's some good players though, right? or something. They, they can, right? It's good. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. Wow. We're also going to talk to uh, Jenna Roaring mm-hmm. because, I don't know, she scored four times. So that'll be interesting. So uh, Nan Glinsick might be down there too because she helped out a bit with her three goals on the night. Oh, so yeah. we're gonna do some post-game interviews and a foodie garden vegetable challenge with a high school kid after this game. Kayla Lodico is the Jenna. Cougar who scored that last goal, number eight, there in the center of your screen. Right so thank you to our Panther crew up here in the press box for supplying us with that information. There's Roaring. She's done. For the day, it looks like. Pretty unproductive. Only four goals. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And how many uh, Uh uh assists? Yeah, she had, I believe, two assists on the day. A total of seven points. Six points. I can't do math at this juncture. There it is. Eight points. Eight points. Four assists. uh, I missed two of them. Wow. So, Roaring just stellar today. We'll speak with her in just a bit. So stick around North Metro TV to have yeah. the, the one-on-one chat with Roaring. We'll also talk to Nan Glinsick, who had three goals. And those two really just finding a lot of open passing lanes tonight, working together, Roaring a couple assists. Not a bad uh, game for Centennial. Double-digit victory. 10-0 the score with just two and a half to go. Two thirty left. Midfield, the Panthers. Still looking for that first goal, Jeff, and uh, they're just not finding any room in that Cougar defense today. Not so far. The Cougar boys are warming up on the track. They'll take the field as soon as this one is over. Panthers were over here in the stands a few minutes ago and I believe have gone back to the locker room to talk things over. Centennial not done yet. Still moving the ball on the far side of the field. So it looks like Centennial will improve to 9-1-2 on the season. And the Panthers will still be looking for their second victory. They are at 1-5-1 overall, 1-3-1 in the conference. Tough loss today, but they'll put this one past them and move on. It is a long season. Under a minute left. Gonna miss you this afternoon, Jeff Dinsmore. Well, I yeah, I'm gonna miss you too because uh, that's gonna be a big game. Centennial against uh, Spinelli Park, and uh, Spinelli Park's got a very good uh, soccer team. They do. Boys, yeah. The boys are very talented. And yeah. Lost to uh, Tatino Grace, but uh, they beat Benil, so it's uh, they're, they're a good team. Look forward to seeing that one coming up after this, but don't forget between games, <laughs> the Garden Vegetable Food Challenge and post-game interviews. It's TV at its finest. <laughs> And there's only one place you're going to get it. North Metro TV, Jeff Dinsmore. That's it. (laughs) Five seconds to go. We're about to hear the final siren. And the Cougars trying to put one more through at the buzzer, and they do! Are you kidding me? (laughs) Number eight again. She gets her second goal of the half as time runs out. Wow! That's a game. That's it. The final score 
11 to nil. Centennial wins. Jeff, I'm going to let you take it from here. I'm going to run downstairs. All right, you do that. And uh, that's it, everybody here on North Metro TV. Our final, the Centennial Cougars 11, the Spring Lake Park nothing. We'll be back right after this here on North Metro TV. Known for its vineyards and hilltop villages, Umbria is also known for its delicious tasting pizza. Made traditionally from the finest ingredients, Umbria Pizzeria will make you taste the difference, smell the love, and transport you to Italy. La cena è pronta. Dinner's ready. You might even begin to feel like an Italian. This feels so. <laughs> Umbria Pizzeria, turning taste into memories. If you need seamless gutters, whether the job is large or small, you can say, I know a guy. For your full service landscaping, you can say, I know a guy. If you need commercial or residential lawn care, you can say, I know a guy. I'm Charlie Walker, and if you need professional seamless gutters, landscaping, and lawn care, you can say, I know a guy. Well, the final score, 11 to nothing, Centennial over Spring Lake Park in the un, uh, unreal game. Jen, Jenna Roaring all over. She gets four goals, four assists. There's another goal coming right here. It's pretty. That was in the first half. Then in the second half, that's the last goal right there. That's the fourth goal of the, C, of the uh, game. And it's 11 to nothing for the Cougars. And uh, it's a non-conference game, but uh, wow, that's, that's, that's unbelievable. We're going to go down to Matt Johnson. Hey, you Matt, gotta that right, you right? got it, buddy. We are down here on the field with a couple of the stars of today's game for the Cougars. They come out victorious 11 to nil. The final one goal going in right at the last second. Very impressive play. The first goal of the game. It was a while ago. Nan Glintzik on the assist from her teammate Jenna Roaring. Uh, Nan, just talk about that first goal, how you guys worked together to get it in. You had a pretty open look. Um, she brought it down the line. I was just making the run on the outside, and I was there to finish it. It really was uh, the momentum builder to go throughout the rest of the game. You had two more goals, a hat trick tonight of three. Just talk about your involvement out there and the holes you saw in the defense. Um, we were just doing really good at splitting the defense and making the runs, and she crossed it into me a lot, and then I... Got it on the top of the box and hit one. Excellent. Well, congratulations. Three goals tonight. The Cougars victorious. Uh, let's talk to Jenna Roaring, the star of this team today, as you seem to be most days. Four goals tonight, and you corrected me. Not four, but five assists. Congratulations on nine points today. Just talk about this dominating performance. Uh, it was just really 100% from all girls uh, going out there, trying their hardest, playing their hardest and everyone giving their best effort is what that took to win the game. Talk about your leadership. I talked to, to, uh, talked to Coach Flo Hogg before the game, and she says you're really direct traffic out there a lot. When you've got the ball, you try to find the girls to get open so you can assist them. You're a pretty unselfish player out there as well. Just talk about that team effort. Yeah, I like to um, you know, score goals myself, really work hard for that, and then I like to give other girls opportunities too to put some in the net. Um, so we all, we all want to be a part of the team and all be, help the win come out. And it even comes from back at the defense, too, to keep the shutout. Yeah, they, they did not allow a single goal tonight. Uh, talk about the 11 uh, goals that you guys scored. Uh, j have you seen a dominating performance uh, this, this dominating from your team? Yeah, we, uh, we always work this hard. It's just a matter of finishing our shots this game. And um, really great effort by our uh, backup goalie came out and scored two goals. So we were really proud of her coming, scoring that last uh, goal right at the buzzer. So great performance by her too Excellent. on the field. Congratulations, a victory for the Cougars tonight. They are ninth of the season, led by Jenna Roaring and Nan Glinsick. That's it for the Cougar girls. The boys are coming up next on North Metro TV. Thanks, ladies. Thank Good you. job.